What's going on, people? It's your boy, BSG. Uh, I got something really, really uh, crazy. There's no other... There's, I've been trying to come up with another word. There's no other word uh, but crazy um, to show you guys today. I haven't really done anything like this in a long time. Uh, I used to do, you know, videos like this. Uh, and I'm going to go back to it. In fact, um, I'm, today I'm launching a new series. And this new series is going to be called uh, This Is Why We Crypto. Or I might just name it Why We Crypto. So there's going to be, uh, not all my videos are going to be like this, but there's going to be a series of videos. Um, you know, I, 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 I still don't think a lot of people are taking crypto series. And I've talked for a long time about uh, AI coming. I think I first started talking about AI like a year ago, maybe even less than that. And everything that I said that was gonna happen in AI is happening faster, right? Like I was talking like, you know, like maybe like, you know, five years or, or a little bit longer thinking, no, it's happening faster than that. Um, companies are actually planning to like get rid of most of their workers. Uber specifically, Uber recently uh, in their quarterly statement said that we're going to become profitable by first eliminating driver incentives and then just eliminating the drivers completely. That's literally in their quarter four. Uh, I'm sorry, their quarterly statement that nobody reads. Um, and don't think that a lot of other uh, companies won't follow suit. They will. Uh, I, I have a lot of experience uh, with, you know, the, the thing that pr pushed me into being an entrepreneur was the fact that I tried to go the traditional right. I tried to go to college. Uh, I got shot, ended up getting my dream job anyway, uh, you know, working next to a lot of the big uh, hip hop and R&B artists and, and, and gospel artists as, um, you know, the first black engineer in uh, this particular studio's history. In their history, I was the first one. Uh, you got all these black artists coming through, but I was the first engineer. Um, and basically making minimum wage there. And, you know, from there I went on to, you know, work at a music store and become the top salesperson there. And uh, was making too much money, so they conspired against me to get fired. And Worked a few more jobs after that, and, and at this time, you know, I'm married and all that, and, you know, my wife uh, is pushing me. Not so much, but, you know, she, she you could tell she's getting frustrated, and, and, you know, it was my wife's family that was really pushing me. My family pushed, you know, acting like I'm not trying, acting like I'm not doing anything when I'm, I'm really out there doing the most. I was the best employee everywhere. Uh, that I worked this one job, which was another sales job. We had training, and so we were supposed to, you know, go through like two weeks of training, which I did. I was the only person that actually completed a sale during training. So they, you know, because I already knew how to sell. So you know, we, they're training us, and I actually closed the deal while training. Right. So I was always one of the top people, if not the top person. And, and for whatever reason, you know, my excellent scared people, especially, you know, people who fear people like me. So that's how I went off into trading and all that. And, and of everything that I've found, crypto is by far it is the easiest thing for the average person to do. And when I say average, I'm not talking about average intelligence, this and that. In order to do day trading, you have to be present. You have to be there, right? You almost can't have a job to day trade, right? So I can't talk to the UPS worker who has money, right? A lot of money, but you know, they can't day trade while they're delivering packages. The FedEx worker, the factory worker, the teacher who's working more hours than she should. I, I can't talk to them about trading options and trading Forex and stuff like that. But what I can teach them to do is how to hold 
crypto uh, and it ends up being more beneficial than trading anyway. Right. So, you know, but a lot of people still don't get it. So I'm going to start showing what's actually going on, because now. When I when I saw this, I, I had to pause the video. <laughs> My, my kids be laughing. I'll be, be having to pause the video so many times just to process it because I literally you're not going to believe what you're getting ready to see. You now have more to worry about than just AI. Let's get into the video. Like and subscribe. Get it out the way now. Let's go. Share this with somebody that you know needs to see this. Share this with somebody that you know that's hating on crypto right now. Let's go. Well, a lot of people are calling it modern slavery. Does that feel I right? I was just about to say that's slavery. That's say slavery. You took away the whips, but you put the paperwork. You took away the masters, and you gave put them in uniform. Same difference. Same difference. It kind of appears that there is a coordinated system in order to protect the labor that's created by the prison system. Walk into a McDonald's in Alabama, and the worker flipping your McDouble could be an incarcerated person. Right there. Bruh. <laughs> You're telling me you go to McDonald's and some of the people that is serving you are people that's in jail. Like, but are you serious right now? Hold on. We, it's just getting started, y'all. I knew about the, 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 the prison work in, behind bars. Like, you know, a lot of the top brands, you know, like a lot of top clothing brands and stuff. It's the prisoners that are making the stuff. I knew that. That's bad enough. But, I, you know, I thought that was contained behind the prison walls. No, they're now sending them out to work. It's a sad situation, a way they, they getting rich off us. The Alabama Department of Corrections farms out incarcerated people to work at hundreds of private companies and government agencies across the state. McDonald's, Burger King, Golden Corral, Wendy's. They got a Wendy's contract right now. State Troopers Office. <laughs> They'll send everybody everywhere. <laughs> They'll send you everywhere. You, ha you have prisoners working at the State Troopers Office. <laughs> You have prisoners working at the state troopers office. Yes, the pro pro parole office. And even though ADOC trusts these incarcerated people to leave prison every day and work alongside the general public, many of them are still denied the chance at real freedom. I work for y'all, but when I come off a of parole, you deny me. Why would you deny me? Because I got free because you're getting free service. This is a story about corporations and the state of Alabama exploiting prison labor and the coercive policies they use to keep its citizens trapped in servitude. Corporations and capitalism will do anything to make a dollar, including using prisoners to come and work for them, which is essentially taking jobs from a person who hasn't committed a crime. You're taking advantage of these people who have committed crimes, right? You're about to see what they're getting paid and you're denying a person who hasn't committed a crime from getting a legitimate job. So you're essentially making getting a job harder for them. They're trying to make it work for their family, right? But their job is being replaced by a prisoner who you're also taking advantage of by not paying them enough. You're about to see it. It, it doesn't work. It's, it's a terrible system. If you're wondering how any of this is even legal, well, it might not be. That's what we went to Alabama to figure out. So, yeah, could you just describe, like, how long you worked here? And uh, I was here 18 months. That I ran a kitchen by myself <laughs> uh, from 8 to 5 every uh Thursday, Tuesday through Thursday. Wow. Yeah. That sounds like hard work. It was. It was. Elizabeth Thomas was in the Alabama work release program for five of her 15 years in prison. So they had a combination of incarcerated people and free world people? Yes. 
Yes. Did you feel like there was a difference how they treated? Oh, most definitely. Uh, we we worked longer hours. Make the work release work over or uh, work extra days. Don't want to give you off days. Like, no, I got to eat my health. I have to get rest. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a machine. But that's how they look at you like. This is Quincy Sanders. During his nearly 17 years in prison, he worked at several restaurants, a lumber yard, and McDonald's. Like, working a real job and trying to stay being incarcerated is a very hard experience. You have to be mind strong, really. Alabama has one of the most overcrowded and deadly prison systems in the United States. Even the Justice Department found conditions there to be unconstitutional. In 2023, almost a person a day died in Alabama prisons, which is almost five times the national average. What the heck is going on in Alabama, bro? A person a day dying in prison? So not, not only do you have this other stuff to worry about, you got to worry about dying as well. A person a day, five times the national average. If you are in Alabama right now, you need to get the heck out of Dodge, bro. You need to move your family out of there because they can trip you up on anything and then you'll get caught up in this. They might get beat to death. People beating folks with sticks. They breaking broomsticks, making little billy clubs. People in there stabbing each other. People in there doing drugs. People in there almost about to die. They not giving you no, no nursing assistance. The nurse probably get there. You probably be dead. But ADOC... Somebody told me there's more drugs in the prison than there, than there is on the streets. Somebody told me that, that there's an actual system inside prison where you can get drugs. How are the drugs getting into the prison? You, you ask yourself that question. It offers people in prison with nonviolent misdemeanor convictions a potentially life-saving deal. If they join the work release program, they get to live in special facilities that are generally much less dangerous than regular prisons. They spend their days working in the free world without prison supervision, and they can earn 72-hour passes to visit their families at home. If you go out here and you do the right thing, uh, you get to elevate, you get to grow, you get out of this facility. But you know, what you didn't tell me is that you finna get all my money. That's what they didn't tell you. The state takes a 40% cut of every incarcerated worker's wages off the top, before taxes. Mmm, <laughs> they're taking 40% of net, bro. 40% 40, 40, 40 of your pay before taxes are taken out. That means that more than 80% of these people's money is being taken. Because they take an A40% off the top. Plus an additional $5 a day for van rides to and from work, $15 a month for laundry, and then any restitution and court fees. So they also driving them to work to make money for them. But they're charging them the Uber ride or whatever ride to, to get to work. They're charging these people to take them to work who are making them money for the government, to and from. If your check is 636, you might see two something, two something out of that. And that's a two, that's every two weeks. And you done work 80 hours and only seen $200. That's 250 an hour. 250 an hour. Maybe. Like it's it's it may it, it makes you lose motivation because you know money motivates people, especially working. So it kind of makes you lose motivation. One estimate calculated that the state of Alabama enjoys a benefit of more than four hundred and fifty million dollars a year off of prison labor. And Jeez. it's slavery all the way around the board, just slavery. And unlike free world workers. Incarcerated workers can't just get a shift covered or quit. ADOC has a list of rules that all incarcerated people are expected to abide by. Rules like don't have contraband, be in your bunk at the required time, and rules like don't refuse to work. That's a rule on the books. CJ Sandley is one of the attorneys behind a recent lawsuit filed against ADOC. 
the range of punishments folks can face if they get written up for refusing to work includes solitary confinement, losing access to phone. You get solitary confinement if you tire, if you if you hurt. They can throw you in solitary confinement if you refuse to work. Oh my goodness, man. Tablets, visitation, access to their families and loved ones for like 30 days, 60 days being required to do more work inside the prison walls for free under threat of punishment i want to talk to my family i want to be a part of my family and you're telling me that if i don't go and do what you want me to do at these jobs work as hard as they want me to do if they need me seven days you want me to go there seven days mm. if they if they need me 80 hours you want me to work 80 hours if i got if they want me to turn around and come back and do a double you want me to get up and you want me to be available to wow, do all man. this but if I decide I'm tired, the Lord forbid if we got sick. Mm -hmm. I talked to Reginald Burrell, who was injured when an entertainment center fell on his head at the private furniture manufacturing company where he worked through ADOC. My man got a strong mm -hmm. head if an entertainment mm -hmm. center mm -hmm. fell mm -hmm. and he all right. <laughs> valuable things in the system is whatever I can do to get out early if a work stoppage to protect myself from being abused and to speak up for myself could subject me to sanctions I don't have to say it but you're going to follow whatever order you're given. Chris England is a state representative in Alabama. He's leading the fight to reform the state's prison system. It is a completely broken system. The folks in charge, the parole board, they don't use guidelines. There is no methodology applied to it. Alabama has some of the lowest parole grant rates in the country. And more than 90% of the time, hearing this answer. Denied, 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 be denied, parole will be denied. If the parole board followed its own guidelines, it would grant parole in about 80% of cases. But instead, that number dropped to just 8% last year. Jeez. And incarcerated people in the work release program don't fare much better. I know that there are people at the Department of Corrections, they assess them, and then they say, you are not a threat. So much so, that you can leave here and go work. Some people actually go home for 72 hours on a weekend and are told, we trust you to the point where you do whatever you got to do. We'll see you. We'll see you Monday morning, 8 o'clock. That same person goes before the parole board and they say, you know, what you did 20 years ago is so bad we can't let you out. You are a threat to public safety. That's wild. But make sure you're at work. Tomorrow. That's wild. They letting them out to work, but they won't give them parole. I, I, and if, if you were listening, notice that all these people have nonviolent crimes. They're not letting murderers out to do this. These are nonviolent crimes. So why are they in jail for 15, 17 years for nonviolent crimes? That's the first thing. The second thing is they're not giving them parole, right? But they letting them out to work. They even letting them out to go home, but they won't let them out to be free. Now, here's the crazy part. It's probably easier for them to get a job being behind bars than it is once they get out because that same job that they working right now they will not be able to get because of their criminal quote unquote history as a free person so if they were to let them go working at these same jobs for many of them would be impossible because of their record but they can work there while they're in prison. If this isn't the shadiest thing in the world, I don't know what is, man. A federal lawsuit claims that 235 people in the work release program were denied parole in fiscal year 2022. So if the system is operating as designed, what is the point of the system? Hmm. Um, it appears labor is. 
One thing our lawsuit talks a lot about is that very clear lineage from slavery in the state to convict leasing and to what we've got now. And the punishment by the Department of Corrections is what our clients are challenging because that's what amounts to involuntary servitude and slavery by the state. After the Civil War, the 13th Amendment abolished slavery with a key caveat. Forced labor was still allowed for people convicted of a crime. And the states adopted a copycat of this federal amendment. But here's the thing. In 2022, Alabamians made a historic vote to remove this exception. The state has a new constitution. Voters overwhelmingly agreed to make our state constitution free of racist laws and language. However, right after the, the voters of the state changed the state constitution, the governor and the Department of Corrections really doubled down on the punishment for refusing to work. So the people closed the loophole and then the governor went around to open it up again, basically. Yeah. That's oh, that's crazy. Governor K. Now, Alabama is a red state. Alabama is about as red as it gets. Alabama is as racist as it gets. The people voted to end this. The people voted to end making these people, you know, like uh, basically it's in the Constitution that says if you committed a, a crime, you could be forced to do anything. You could be forced to work anywhere. That's how they're getting away with this. It's in the Constitution. It's been in there since day one. The people of Alabama, the people voted to end this. And these politicians, Republicans, decided to, that they was going to keep it going and make it a loophole some kind of way. Man, this is this is crazy, bro. This executive order made encouraging or causing a work stoppage a high level violation on the same level. As Probably because she getting a nice fat check, I guarantee you. And bribery. The order also cracked down on correctional incentive time, better known as good time. In some prison systems, good behavior is rewarded with what's known as good time. People can earn sentence reductions and get released from prison early. And the state legislature even changed its good time law to increase that, that form of punishment for folks who refuse to work. We're simply changing the amount of correctional incentive time or good time days that are offered. Are we increasing or are we lowering it? We are lowering them. All of this was done on the heels of this constitutional change and frankly it just it's a brazen ignoring of the will of the voters wow. of the state and that's what that's what our lawsuit is about. And so many people want to work but they want to be paid fairly. They want to be paid a free world wage for the labor they're doing. Um, they want to be working in safe conditions. They want to be treated fairly. And they don't want to be forced to work if they don't want to, or they can't because they're sick, or they have a doctor's appointment, or they're feeling unsafe in their work and they want to change jobs. One of the unique things about this state, and really the country, is that things just never end. Mm -hmm. They evolve. If your prison system is full, it, it's primarily full of black folks, black men, and you're tell the truth, bro. A racial disparity in who gets released and who doesn't. Can you imagine the optics of what that labor force looks like? Black people account for just over a quarter of Alabama's total population, but more than 50 percent of the prison population. An AL.com investigation found that black men were 25% less likely to get parole than white men. For nonviolent crimes, bro. No. Of a group of men who are working convict labor decades ago, and juxtapose that next to a current labor force, it would probably look the same. That's crazy. So, what is the point of prison? Is it the creation of a cheap, controllable, and confined labor source? Yep. Or is it rehabilitation? And what does a real commitment to rehabilitation for incarcerated people actually look like? I wish they would strip that name off of that Alabama Department of Correction. I wish they will take correction out of that and just say Alabama Department because ain't no correction. 
ain't no correction, ain't no structure, ain't no discipline. You discipline me to do what you want you want me to do, not the law. Not, not, not to come back in society and be able to live off of what you taught me. That's not what's going on. If I lived off what DOC taught me, I'd still be a criminal. Because they want that paycheck. They, they, they wow. want me to come back in tomorrow. They, they want me to. Because they keep they money keep flowing. There's no correction. We need to start correcting. We need to start loving. We need to start teaching. What I'm looking at, there's no job that they won't give them. Right? So, you know, like, who's to say that it's not prisoners uh, that are working as delivery drivers or prisoners at the post office or, you know, prisoners uh, in our schools, you know, or wherever, right? Most of the good jobs right now are protected by unions. And so that's why I've left it here to show the union membership of employees in the United States in the last 40 years uh, has been cut in half. This is only going to go down. Um, I'm, I'm stressing this because this is where most of the, the good money is being made if you're an employee. Unions get paid. Unions get paid more than, you know, if you're just on your own. Right. That's just facts. But look at what's happening. They want to decimate the union. I just learned of a plant that the government gave three hundred thirty million dollars to to open. Um, and, you know, they gave them the money already and the plant won't reopen until 2028, maybe. And what's special about that date is um that's when the UAW contract is over with. So they're specifically delaying opening so they don't have to, you know, what they're hoping is that they're not going to have to deal with the UAW. Right? So uh, I just talked to somebody recently about this very same thing. And so even if you are in a union job, it's coming to an end. If you are in a regular job unprotected, you know, good luck. Unless you are a, a doctor, um, you know, and, and like your, your field is, is like necessary, um, they're going to find a way to replace your job. And again, I thought it was just AI. Now it's prison working. Capitalism says get the job done for as cheap as possible and make as much money as possible. And it's not just Alabama doing this. It's every state doing this. Um, you know, how is crypto going to help me with this? The only way I can explain it to you is to explain it to you. If you have been watching my channel in 2017, 2018, uh, I was telling you, or, or, or if you knew me, because I, to be fair, I don't know when my channel started, but... As long as I've had a channel, my very first video where I showed my face and videos prior to that, I was talking about crypto and specifically I was talking about Bitcoin. And around that time, uh, Bitcoin was like uh, $200, 250 $300. And I'm preaching Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Yo, you need as much Bitcoin as possible. I believe anybody watching this channel over time, maybe not all at one time, but over time should have been able to buy like 10 Bitcoin when it was 300, 400, 500 dollars. 10 Bitcoin. That's 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 dollars. Where am I getting that from? I'm getting that from the fact that um, I did taxes for 20 years. And I was always able to get people at least three or four thousand dollars on their tax refund. So say what you want to say about tax refund. I know, you know, depending on who you are. Oh, that's money that you were owed, and that's money that they took from you and you'll never get it all back. Yes, you're right. You're 100 percent right. But the bottom line is that was money 
that you weren't expecting. You had made it up until that point, paid your bills or not, or whatever the situation was, right? To make it to there, you didn't die. So you had enough food, you had enough water, you had some type of shelter, obviously you had some type of job, something, right? And now you get this lump sum of three, four, five thousand dollars rather than spending it on a vacation, rather than spending it on clothes, uh, even rather than spending it on something as, as more noble as just saving. Right. There are too many regular people. Right. Who are just saving, like literally putting it in a bank. That is the worst thing that you can do. So at any any for the next year or so from 2017, 18, 19, you could have accumulated 10 Bitcoin. Bitcoin is now 60,000 at $600,000. 2013, 14, 15, 16. I, I didn't have what I have now. And the only thing that I could, I didn't need, I didn't have a job. The only thing that I was doing was buying cryptocurrency. And the cryptos that, that I just gave you, Bitcoin, of all the things that I've given, that's grown the least amount. So $300 to $60,000, which is a 20X, right? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, that's grown the least amount. I've had stuff for 100X, more than 100X, that I've given out either through a course or on this channel. That's what crypto can do. So what I do now is I'm trying to find the next Bitcoin. And if I'm right, if I'm right, you only have to be right a few times. It has the potential to completely retire you. And then you get to start living the life that you want to live. For me, what I have asked God to allow me to do, and yes, I believe in God. I have asked God to allow me to help people, to bless them. So as people who want to serve God, you're not bound by your work responsibilities and your work environment. Quite frankly, there are people who consider themselves Christian who are working in such toxic work environments that as a Christian, you should be ashamed to work in. There are things that are being done at the company. There are jokes that are being told. There's all kind of things that you know good and well as a Christian. I know I'm not talking to all of you right now. I'm just talking to a small, maybe less than 3% of you. But I'm telling you what my why is. It is hard to maintain your spirituality. Right. Just on a, a, a level of being able to come home and be a good person when you're dealing with all kind of crap at your job. Inevitably, what you do is go home and you take that crap to your kids and you take that crap to your wife or your husband. Right. And you you stink up the whole room because of other stuff that's going on. I don't think any of you was sleeping with your wife on a couch with no floor, with no carpet, no hardwood floor, and your kids sleeping uh, in sleeping bags on the floor. So to go from that to where I am now is nothing but a miracle, nothing but the grace of God. And if you went about this alone, you would go out there, you would take your few thousand dollars, your five thousand dollars, your ten thousand dollars, you would follow people on Twitter and eventually you will lose your money. Okay? So, I'm like I said, I'm going to find some other stories. Why we crypto? I, I feel like this is the best chance for everybody who, who, you know, doesn't have the time, the resources, who doesn't want to try to go out there and try to, you know, write their own business and, and you know, be the... 10,000 type of car wash business or club or restaurant, right? Because that's what's awaiting you out there. You can make more money 
doing this while keeping your job and being a good dad, being a good mom, all of that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. Leave a comment, share, tell me how you feel about this. Like I said, sorry to get long at the end, but, you know, y'all know I, I always try to keep it real. All right, it's your boy BSG. I'm going to holler at y'all in the next video.